So before we go outside and actually set up the dish for the first time, I want to show you uh, Link Control, which is the uh, software interface that you go through after you set up your dish, you power up your system, and you start up the control laptop that's kind of built into your indoor unit, which you'll see when we go outside. Um, this, this is what you go through to uh, basically configure your system to be able to come up on the satellite. So after you're set up, this is how you actually get go from having your dish set up to actually transmitting the signal. So um, when you start up your laptop outside, this is gonna come up automatically. You don't have to do anything. This is the only thing that's on this Panasonic Toughbook that's built into your uh, indoor unit. Nothing else should go on the Panasonic Toughbook. It's just to use link control. And you'll actually see it's encased in this metal case. You can't even fit any USB ports or anything into the side of it because it's so packed and tight. So. But anyway, you start up the laptop, this comes up, and this is your home screen. What it's going to do is it's going to do a bunch of system, uh, a bunch of self-tests. It's going to make sure that your system is good to go. The indoor unit, which is where the laptop is, is going to be talking to the dish, which is the outdoor unit. And uh, just making sure that all the, uh, all the parts of the outdoor unit are functioning properly before you even transmit. If there's a problem, then there where it says normal, it will give you a warning sign. It'll be a yellow warning. What that means is that something's wrong with the system. You might not be operating at 100%, but you should still be able to transmit. It's not completely unfunctional. What a warning could be is if you've done something as simple as forget to plug in your GPS. Um, so uh, basically, it's not a, a deal breaker. If where it says normal, if that has uh, something that says alarm and it's red, then that means there's, there's something major there's some major problem going on with your system. You're gonna to have to contact Norsat most likely to uh, see what the problem is. If you do have a red uh, alarm sign, then you can go to status. And that's gonna give you all the different readings and the power levels for all these components in your dish. Now, I don't know what all these numbers mean, but if you call Norsat, uh, given those numbers that were provided, or uh, you know, contact them by email, whatever the problem is will probably show up here in red and you'll wanna give them whatever the figure is here in your details and they're probably going to know just from that number what the problem is they're, they'll probably be able to diagnose the issue just from this screen so uh, that's why it's important to have that norsat uh contact info just in case you ever do need to contact them but our dish is actually running fine you can see our status is normal so what we'll do is we'll go to profiles it's very intuitive as as you come up on the satellite and as you get all these settings you just start from the top and you just work your way all the way down to the transmit page so you just go to the very next uh, screen which is profiles now every system has uh, profiles already added into the system so every dish has an Afghanistan profile that's that's the only channel that you're going to use to come up and to transmit video from Afghanistan you know you're going to have a divots one high video rate and a divots two high video rate you use those channels when you're coming out out of Iraq out of Kuwait out of Germany, pretty much everything sort of in, uh, you know, Eastern Europe and uh, I guess the Middle East, not Afghanistan. Afghanistan's a little bit too far east, but, you know, Iraq, Kuwait is going to use Divots 1 and Divots 2. Here in the United States, we use Divots North America high video. That's also the case for Cuba, Haiti, a lot of uh, kind of, uh, I guess, Central America could possibly use that. Uh, Hawaii is going to use that. Anywhere up in Canada is going to use Divots North America high video so once you highlight the the profile you know depending on your location you don't have to do anything else you just highlight it the system is going to load all of these settings and you're going to be good to go if for some reason you did have to change something you're only going to want to be doing that unless you're instructed to do so by the toc or by norsat then you would go to edit this profile and they're going to walk you through the steps that you need to do to change whatever it is that you need to change but we're not going to do that. So we'll just cancel out of here. All right, so we've highlighted Divids North America High Video. That's the channel that we're going to use here in Atlanta. After we do that, we're ready for the next tab. So we just go down to antenna pointing. Now, what you're doing on this page is you've already picked your satellite profile. So, that, so the system knows which satellite up in outer space you're shooting at. Now you're just telling the system where on earth you're located so it can tell you where you need to point the dish. So there's two ways of doing this. The preferred method 
is to click use GPS data, which you have your GPS, we'll, we'll actually connect that when we go outside. You've got to do that before you power up the system so that it'll read. So we'll click use GPS data. Oh, I just clicked it. For some reason, the GPS is broken because it's given me a negative elevation. I don't, I can't have a negative elevation because I'd be pointing down into the earth. So that, that's throwing up a warning sign. So my GPS is broken. Now what do I do? Well, you can still tell your system where you're located by going to the select city option, picking your continent, go to North America, got to scroll all the way down here to the United States, open that menu up, and now Atlanta is listed here. Same with every other country in the world. We've, they've listed some, uh, some cities within those countries, so you just basically pick the closest one. Of course, GPS is preferred because that's going to give you the, your most exact location, but even if we use the GPS here, and um, if we came up using the GPS, it, it wouldn't be very much different than using the Atlanta button or even, say, using the uh, Tampa, Florida button. Even Atlanta and Tampa are going to be pretty close to the same settings of where you uh, point the dish in the sky. So the select city is, if you, if you don't have a GPS, it is, it is going to help you out a lot. So after you pick your city, just select OK. And then all these numbers up here change. These are your asthma settings, your elevation, and the transmit polarization that you need to set on your dish to be able to hit that satellite, which is Echo Star 9. Your satellite info is actually right here. Again, when you pick your profile, it's going to pick your satellite. So you don't need to even really worry about what satellite you're hitting, just as long as you pick the uh, appropriate profile in the profiles page. So now that we've got all of our settings, we told the dish, we told the system where the dish is located. Then we go down to the alignment tab. All those numbers stay with us, so they didn't go anywhere. They just moved over to the left side of the screen. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do on this page is open up Receiver Spectrum Analyzer. And you're gonna to wanna to be sure that your vertical alignment down here is highlighted. Reason why is because what, what that does is it allows the uh, system, when you're getting close to the satellite, when you're pointing the dish and you're getting close to the satellite, you're gonna see a spike come up on that graph. That's going to tell you, that's basically the fingerprint for the satellite that you need to hit. And when you see that spike, then you know that you're getting really close and that you're about ready to get a lock on that dish, or on that satellite. So right now the system assumes that we are already locked onto the satellite. It's given us a strong spike. Here you see your signal level, which is the reading that you're getting out of the, uh, out of the satellite. I want to point this out about the signal level you're not really looking for the highest signal level. What you're looking for first is to get that spike because it's actually possible to get a stronger signal level off of another satellite that's incorrect. So, so don't be fooled. You know, I could be aiming at, at, a, uh, at an inappropriate satellite and I could be getting a signal strength of 700. Even though that looks like it's better than what I'm getting you know, when I have a spike, it's not because you're not, at the right, you're not aimed at the right satellite. So once you get the spike, and then you look down here and you see your modem lock and your DVB lock, that's when you know you're good to go. And then you wanna make minor adjustments to the dish to try to get the signal level as high as possible. So the signal level is, is only important as long as you have the lock and then when you're just peaking your dish to try to get the best setting possible. And that'll make more sense as we're outside training you guys will get to see that. Um, but I do wanna point out, um, up here, compass azimuth, elevation, transmit polarization. What you're going to want to do first, and we're going to go over these uh, outside as well, but you're first going to level your dish. The first adjustment that you're going to make is to polarization. The second adjust, adjustment you're going to make is to elevation. And then last, you're going to want to adjust the azimuth. So remember the acronym LPEA, level, polarization, elevation, and azimuth. I don't have a really good ditty for that. Just remember LPEA. And that's the step that we're, that, those are the steps that we're going to take when we're actually pointing the dish, trying to find that satellite in the sky. I'm sorry, please don't. What stands for LPEA? First, uh, L stands for level. P stands for polarization. E stands for elevation. And A is azimuth. And you will be wanting to use the compass azimuth. It gives you a true azimuth as well, but um, we've come to find that usually the, the compass azimuth is more accurate because that takes into account all the metal in that that's uh, in the dish itself. 
and kind of uh, adjust for that. All right, so after you've uh, gotten your lock on the dish using the spectrum analyzer here, and then you see that you got at least a modem lock, which is the most important, then you go down to transmit. And at this point, this is when you call the TOC. And remember, just like what Randolph was saying downstairs, you always have to call the TOC, even if you have the time scheduled. You have to call them prior to coming up because they actually have to walk you up on the, on the, uh, on the satellite. So when you got your locks, you call the TOC, notice your transmitter is off. They're going to contact the satellite provider, probably conference you in with them. And then somebody's going to say, okay, you know, it's clear. Go ahead and come up CW minimum. You're going to click that. Right now, you're throwing out a really weak signal. Only about, you're only kicking out about a watt or two out of the system. The reason why they do that is in case you are aimed completely wrong or your polarization is way off, they can kind of tell that you're not quite right, but you're, not, you're, you're probably not affecting another transmission very much. But once they check that out and they say, okay, you, know, you look pretty good, come up CW nominal, click CW nominal. At this point, you're kicking out you know, basically full power. But what you're not doing is you're not sending up all the little ones and zeros of your video. You're just sending up what they call a clean, uh, a clean wave, a clean carrier uh, is going up to the satellite. And then they'll really be able to tell whether or not you're pointed correctly, or whether or not, you know, you need to make some, some adjustments. But considering that you, you've done everything correctly up to this point, then they'll say, okay, uh, go ahead and come up modulated, modulated nominal. You'll click on that. Right now, your camera's hooked into your system. Say you're getting ready for a live interview. At this point, you know, you have your camera trained on, on the individual who's about to get interviewed. The TOC is going to start seeing that person. They're going to see that person come up. They're going to be able to hear that person when they talk into their mic. Um, and also that person's going to be able, through the, through the earbuds, through the IFB on the system, they're going to be able to hear the TOC talking to them. Not over the phone, but actually over the satellite connection. So... At modulated nominal, that's when you're truly transmitting, you're, they're seeing everything that you're shooting, and uh, you're pretty much good to go for your interview. So you do your interview, or you send up your B-roll or whatever it is that you're uh, using the dish for. At that point, you can go over, you can go in front of the camera, wave at the camera, talk into the mic, say, hey, TOC, I'm done with my uh, interview. They're going to come back over the IFB, over the earpiece, and over the speakers, and they're going to say, okay, it looks good. You can go ahead and drop off. They can tell you to drop off the bird. You, don't, you might not have to even give them a call back when you're ready to, when you're ready to stop transmitting because they have that comm with you over the connection. When they tell you to drop off the bird, go to stop transmit, and now you're not transmitting anymore. So what Randolph was talking about transmitting, leaving your transmitter on but not transmitting, that's basically ensuring that you hit stop transmitter. Some units just leave their whole system on all the time, which is okay as long as they stop transmit when they're done transmitting. Now that you've properly set up the hardware of your dish following the instructions from the video by the soldiers with the 10th PAOC uh, called setup of NORSAT system, now you're ready to power your system, aim it at the appropriate satellite and acquire that satellite and then transmit a signal. But before you start powering the system, I want you to do a couple of checks first. First, you'll want to check all the connections to make sure they're secure. Second, you're going to want to come to the front of your dish. Maybe I can. You're going to want to come to the front of the dish and ensure that your flex waveguide is attached. You're going to require this for a transmission. As the, uh, as the soldiers with the 10th PAOC showed you, this is installed only when you're testing the dish or when you know that you're not going to transmit a signal. But we are transmitting a signal now, so we're going to have the flex waveguide attached. Next thing you want to double check is that you have the appropriate LMB attached to the end of your dish. If you're here in the United States, you're going to have this LMB attached. Its uh, nomenclature is 1000 Hotel Alpha. If you're in the Middle East, which includes Germany, Iraq, Kuwait, Afghanistan, most locations in Asia, you're going to want to ensure that LMB 1000 Hotel Charlie is attached. You can see this nomenclature here on the label. And uh, some other locations in Western Europe, as well as some locations in the, in the Southeast, uh, in, uh, Southeast Asia and the Pacific Rim, might, have, might require the use of 1000 Hotel Bravo, this LMB. 
So that's just gonna be a matter of you checking with the Divids TOC or checking with the customer support team at Norsat to ensure that from these locations that are not in the Middle East, uh, that we usually do not accept satellite transmissions from, that you have the proper LMB attached. But remember that the United States will always use LMB 1000 Hotel Alpha or the Alpha type LMB and our more common transmission locations in the Middle East, such as Iraq, Afghanistan, Kuwait, and even uh, Eastern Europe, like Germany, is gonna use LMB Charlie, so 1000 Hotel Charlie. But after you've ensured that all your connections are properly made, you've got the proper LMB attached, now you're ready to uh, bring power to your system. So the first step in doing this is ensure that your system is connected to a reliable power source. This can be either 110 volt or 220 because the system has a built-in converter. So if you're in the Middle East and you have access to 220, don't worry about tying up uh, a, a wattage converter or a converter because it will be able to handle that 220. So you take these AC cables here and you attach them to the outlets on the back of the dish. So the one at the bottom is what you'll attach first. That's the modem. Once you attach power to the modem, it's going to turn on automatically. And that's what we want. The second attachment is going to be to the baseband unit. You can plug the AC cable in, but you don't want to flip the switch yet on the, on the baseband unit. After we bring power to the modem, you'll want to come to the front of the indoor unit, which is this unit right here, and you'll look down at the modem lights, and they should be red when you first uh, plug in the modem. It's gonna take about a minute and a half to two minutes for this modem to actually warm up. Once the lights on the modem turn green, then you're gonna be ready to flip the switch on your baseband unit. So now it's just a matter of waiting for the lights to turn green. Now they've turned green. So what we do is we come around to the back of the baseband. Up here, if you're facing the back, it's the top left. You're gonna flip the switch on the back of the baseband. At this point, you're actually feeding power to your dish. And, and you can tell this by the uh, compass lighting up. It's giving you an azimuth reading and some of the other digital panels on the back of the dish are actually giving you a reading. So first you'll want the, again, first you'll want the modem to warm up. After the lights on the modem turn green, then you'll flip the switch on the baseband. The next step is you're going to want to ensure your GPS is connected. This is the GPS receiver. One end of it is an Amphenol connector. You're going to find the notches here, the little teeth on the Amphenol connector. Find the broadest notch, then on the front of the dish where it says GPS receiver, you're going to line that up with the broadest notch on that kind of pops into place and then you lock it into place. So our GPS is now connected. So just to sum up, we first powered up the modem. The modem lights turn green. We then flipped the switch on the baseband and then we connected our GPS. The last step is to power up your laptop. So if switch right here at the bottom left, just slide it to the right and your laptop is powered. So there's a little ditty to remember this order of operations. It's Mama Sings Good Lullabies. M stands for modem. Power that up first. And then after the lights on the modem turn green, you flip the switch. That's what S stands for. Good and Good Lullabies stands for GPS. That's your third step. And Lullabies stands for laptop. Flip the switch on the laptop. So Mama Sings Good Lullabies. Just remember, modem, switch, GPS, then laptop. Once you've gotten to the alignment tab on link control, at that point, it's time to start pointing your dish to the figures that are suggested by link, con link control. The first adjustment you're gonna need to make, which they went over in the, in the video for setting up a NORSAT system, is to level your dish. This is very important and must be done prior to all other pointing. So you have a tool here on each leg, you can turn these and it'll actually raise or lower the dish. So it's important to get your dish on as level of a surface as possible when you first start 
setting up because that's less work that you're gonna have to do to actually level the system. When you're leveling, here on the dish there's a bubble, a bubble leveler that's gonna tell you when the system is level. After your dish is level, the next step for pointing is to adjust the transmit polarization. So first we've leveled, that's L. Now we're at P, polarization. To do so, you loosen the knob at the end of the boom arm, and the polarization is gonna be spat out by link control. It's gonna tell you how you need to polarize the dish. It's either gonna be a negative or a positive figure. In this case, for this location in the United States and for aiming at the satellite that we're trying to hit, the polarization is 41.7. So we adjust to 41.7 on the polarization dial. And then we lock the feed horn into place. Now we're polarized at 41.7. We're ready to move on to the next step in the pointing process, which is elevation. So now we've leveled the dish, we've polarized the dish, and our next step is elevation. So L is for level, P is for polarization, E is elevation. Right now we see that we're at an elevation of 42.5 degrees. That's here on the digital readout. For this location in the United States, we need to be at an elevation of 34.5 degrees. So I need to lower the way the dish is pointed. To do so, for this first major adjustment, I'm gonna depress the button on the bezel nut, which will give me some slack, and then I can adjust, make some major adjustments to the elevation of the dish. And my goal is to get it as close to 34.5 as possible because once I get it close, then I can use the small nuts to make those minor adjustments. So I'm pretty close right now. I'm gonna lock the elevation into place. I'm at 33, so now I'm gonna use these small nuts to bring the dish up to 34.5. So I'm at about 33. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use these small nuts to bring the elevation up to 34.5. You wanna get it as close to the figure indicated on link control as possible, but as long as you're within about a tenth of a, de of a degree, you should be good to go. So we've leveled the dish, We've adjusted the polarization, we've adjusted the elevation. Now the very last step is adjusting the azimuth. So to do so, I'm just gonna have to loosen these knobs here. That's gonna allow you to adjust the base plate. And then there's one on the front. And as long as everything else is correct, your dish is level, your polarization is set, your elevation is where it needs to be, and what you do is you adjust the base plate towards the figure indicated in link control. In this case, it's 238, 238 degrees. Slowly, I adjust the dish towards 238 degrees. As I'm adjusting, there's somebody who's at the computer, who's at the indoor unit, and they're on the alignment page, they're looking for a spike to appear on the receiver spectrum analyzer. Once they start to see a spike, they're gonna tell me to stop adjusting. It might not be exactly the number that's indicated in link control. That's why you always do this step last. In this case, we received a lock on the satellite when we were at 233 degrees, even though the system told us we needed to be at 238 degrees. That number might be 233 instead of 238 because of the amount of metal that's around this compass. So that's why it's very important to do the azimuth as your last step, because as long as all the other settings are correct, you're going to be able to pan the sky until you eventually track down that satellite. So please remember, when pointing your dish, you're gonna to wanna to follow the acronym LPEA. First level, second polarization at the front of the dish. Third is elevation, you're up and down, and get that number as close to link control as possible, then your last step is to adjust the azimuth. The reason, again, why you do the azimuth last 
is that number could vary from place to place and from dish to dish, depending on the calibration of the compass. But as long as all your other settings are correct, you will eventually pan over the satellite. And how you can tell that you're getting close to the satellite, remember, while you're adjusting the dish, someone else is reviewing the receiver spectrum analyzer and they're looking for that spike to come up on that chart. When they start to see the spike, as long as you have vertical alignment highlighted, then that means that you're pointed at the correct satellite. After you've gotten your spike and then you see modem lock, most importantly a modem lock, and preferably also a DVB lock, then you've got to peak your antenna. To do so, you're here at the dish and you switch the elevation over to the signal strength settings and you make very minor adjustments to the elevation and to the azimuth to try to get your signal strength as high as possible. But at the same time, you're not losing your locks. So ensure that first you have your modem lock and you have that spike in the spectrum analyzer, then after you have all that, then just make very slight adjustments to get that signal strength number as high as possible. That's going to ensure that you're locked onto the satellite and that you have the best connection as possible before you begin transmitting. After you've done all that, now you're ready to call the Divids TOC and start your transmission. They're going to walk you through those steps. And what you're going to do is you're going to, be, you're going to go next to the transmit tab on link control. You're going to call the Divids TOC and they're going to tell you to come up first CW minimum, then you're going to come up nominal, and then after that you're going to come up modulated nominal. At that point, they're going to be able to see the, tran the transmission, they're going to be able to see what your camera is shooting as long as that's connected to the system.